Hey guys, welcome to Bible Time! Was that an awesome baseball game or what? You said it, Elmer. Those Reds sure can play. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been thinking about something lately. Yeah? What's that? How do you know God exists? Whoa. That came out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. It's just something I've been thinking about. So, what would you tell someone if they asked you? Well, I'd guess them I know, I guess I'd tell them I know he exists because of the things he's done in my life. See, I thought of that too. I know no one can argue with your experience, but I was wondering if there was another explanation. Well, I suppose you could tell them to look out the window. Huh? Look out the window. Now, what do you see? A lot of cement with yellow lines painted on it. What? No, what do you see besides the parking lot? Oh, I see grass and trees, a sunshiny day, a blue sky with a few clouds. Exactly. And what do you see when you look up in the sky at night? Let's see. There's a moon and stars, I guess. That's right. And how do you think that all got there? Well, if you believe what some teach in school, it just happened. Oh, come on. You don't believe that. Well, the only other alternative is that it was designed that way. Right. And if there's a design... There's gotta be a designer. On top of nature, just look at us. How can anyone say we just happened, just evolved? We're no accident. Hey, I remember now. The Bible says that creation itself is a witness to God's existence, and therefore, no man has any excuse. It also says that only the fool in his heart said there is no God. So really, we don't have to offer anyone proof that God exists. His proof is all around us. Huh, his proof is us. Cool. Speaking of cool, how about some ice cream? Sounds great. Let's sing, I'm in the Lord's Army. I may never march in the infantry, I'm in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fight on the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fight on the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Now we're going to do the space version. So you're going to blast in outer space. You're going to ride a rocket race. You're going to shoot a little later and walk in the moon in space. So let's go and do uh, the space version. I may never blast in the outer space, ride in a rocket race, shoot little lasers. I may never walk on the moon in space, but I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army, Roger, sir. I'm in the Lord's army, Roger, sir. I may never blast in the outer space, ride in a rocket race, shoot little lasers. I may never walk on the moon in space, but I'm in the Lord's army, Roger, sir. Now let's sing, He is Able. He is able, he is able, I know he is able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He is able, he is able, I know he is able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He I know he is able, 
Time with Mr. Sam. I need a, a drink of water. I've been, been running for a long time. <sighs> what is that? That looks like muddy water? Who put this there? It must be a prank or something, but no one wants to drink this. We should be drinking crystal clean, purified water that's gonna quench your thirst. Hmm. I think it's tonight's lesson we're we'll looking at that very idea about what we find satisfaction in. Even as we look at this world, we have to make choices whether to please God or to please ourselves. Tonight, even as we look at this lesson in Jeremiah chapter 2, we're going to have to, we're going to learn about this, the people making a bad choice. The thing is, you and I, we need to make choices that please God. And so even as we look at Jeremiah chapter 2, we're going to see a people starting off really good. We're going to see a people striving to do the right thing, but then... They start to get swayed by the things of the world, the, the idols, the things that they want to worship rather than actually pleasing God. And so even as I kind of begin, in Jeremiah chapter 2, it says, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in the land that, that was sown. And so you picture that the people, they were known for being good, known for pleasing God, knowing for, known for making the right choices. And so they started off, and they're, they're known for that. And we keep going on. They, they were holiness under the Lord. They're the first fruits, and they were actually doing really good. And the thing is, today, what are, what are you living for? Are you living for God? Are you devoted to pleasing Him? Are you devoted to reading the Word and striving to understand what God has for you? But even as we keep moving forward, we can ask ourselves that question, what am I devoted to? Am I in God's Word? Am I striving to study the Word of God? Or am I living for something else? And as we keep going into the story, we're gonna see a people who start to kind of change what they're all about. They start to change what they love. And it's showing in their life, rather than choosing the good crystal clean water, they're going after the dirty water of the world, the stuff that does not satisfy. Even as we keep moving forward, we, we look in Jeremiah chapter two, and in verse seven it says, and, I'm, and, I, and I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof, but when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made thine heritage, a heritage an abomination. So God is saying, I remember you when you used to live for me. I, I did a whole bunch of things for you. I brought you out of captivity. I gave you food. I gave you water. I supplied all your needs. But even though I was faithful to you, you are being unfaithful. You are rebelling against me. You're choosing to go the exact opposite direction, choosing to follow your sin. And you're choosing to love the things of this world, your own hobbies, your sports, your athletics, your the things that you enjoy, and you start to worship those things more than me. And so they began to worship idols, began to go away from God, not pleasing Him, but rather to disobey going away and striving to do things that he did not like, that God did not like. And it was very displeasing to God. And even we think about this question, how did they get to that point? In the very first four verses, we see the people, they were known for being holy, they were known for being set apart, they were known for doing the right things. But then very shortly, something drastically changed. And my question to you, why? How is that even possible? And I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you. A, I'm going to show you an illustration, a picture of what that looks like and how they got to that point. How they got to the point to where they were totally disobeying, totally in the exact opposite direction, not pleasing God. So you wonder how the people of Israel got to where they were pleasing God, and now they're going the exact opposite direction. The thing is, as we begin to build on the story, I'm going to show you a picture, an illustration, to hopefully make it very clear to you of how that process occurred. The thing is, I want you to picture this vase, this, this glass um, cup or vase as your life. And you fill your life with something. You fill your life with things, and whether it's mindsets or actions, things that you really like. Let's say you start to fill your life with false gods or idols or things that you love more than God. 
and maybe you begin to like material possessions as one of the next best toy. Wanting things of this world and begin to think, oh, I gotta have this, gotta have what my friend has. And you begin to get greedy. You want the next best thing. And it's all about what makes you happy. And it might be your own pride. You might think, oh, look how great I am. You begin to boast and you think, I'm better than that person. And we start to fill our life with those types of thoughts rather than, okay, I wanna please God. I, I wanna be humble before my God. I wanna be a servant. I wanna put others before myself. I wanna make sure that God has first place in my life. And that should be where we are striving to, to live, the, the, how we should be living in this world. Make sure God is the first priority. Think pride, humility, begin to fill our life with these things. And you start to see those mindsets, the things that you're living for, and you begin to, sh it just shines through, through the, the, your life in this vase. And okay, that's what I'm all about. That's what I'm finding my identity in. And so these are representing worldly mindsets or actions that you are taking that are going against what God says. Even the people of Israel in verse 13 in Jeremiah 2 says this, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So the people of Israel right here, they have done two evils. First of all, they have forsaken me. They have forsaken God. They've went the exact opposite direction that God desires them to be. And what have they done? They've hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. You ask, what is a broken cistern? You think, okay, maybe when it's raining, maybe you think of these giant plastic um, barrels that hold water and even think a water tower in a city. They hold water for a purpose to sustain and so that you, it saves water so that if there's a drought, if there's a shortage, you can always access that water. Back in that day, they used cisterns. Cisterns were made out of limestone or big rocks. It was carved out, and there'd be water that was stored inside for later use. So they use it for drinking or washing or whatever it may be. The thing is, there's, back in their day, there's three types of where you could get water. First of all, there was um, running water. Think about a river, a rushing river. And that's a good source of all because it's usually fresh, it's, it's pure, it's clean. But the next, the next type would be groundwater. Ground that would just sit in puddles or off on the side, it would collect and it would just become stagnant or the things begin to grow on it. The third type of water is runoff water. And this runoff water is something that people would collect for future use. If you think about this passage, it's talking about a cistern. Um, it's not, if you think about the passage, it's not just any regular cistern, but rather a broken sister. Think about a broken sister. It usually has cracks, right? You think about if it rains, the water begins to fill that sister and the water begins to fill that, that basin. But when, because there's a crack, the water begins to seep down and all that's left is the, the grime, the mud, the disgusting stuff that no one wants. But in this passage, it's saying, okay, but, my, but these people, they were forsaking the living water, the water that would truly satisfy for the grime, the disgusting stuff that does not satisfy. And really when we are seeking after the world, when we start to live for our own pride, our own sin, we're going to that disgusting mud at the bottom of the cistern, trying to drink it, but it's not gonna sat satisfy. You think about when I was running and I had that big, my, my bottle of, of muddy water. That stuff was not gonna satisfy. It was actually gonna um, cause me to want to want something else caused me to want pure water that would satisfy. The thing is the people back in, people of Israel, they were seeking out things that weren't gonna satisfy and they're going towards those broken cisterns, those things that they thought would satisfy, but wouldn't. If you think about in our day, what are some things that you might begin to love more than God? What are some things that you are desiring or that you are putting above God? Maybe some of these ping pong balls, maybe you really like soccer. And you begin to spend so much time doing soccer or any kind of sport, volleyball, or maybe you really like video games and you're spending all your time doing video games and you're neglecting God. You're neglecting pleasing Him. Or maybe even uh, TV, how much, what you watch on the internet or on the TV or on YouTube and you're spending all your time doing that. Or maybe you like magazines or, or just watching sports and, and just spending all your time on those things and you're neglecting 
God. The thing is, when we start to love those things, what does our life start to look like? You look at this vase, what do you see? You see all the things that you're filling your life with. You're filling your life with laziness, bad mindsets, your pride. You're starting to fill your life with soccer and all these sports and your hobbies and the things that you love. And you're placing more value on those things rather than your God. And really, when you think, think about it, is there any really a lot of space for God? So as you kind of saw, this vase represents your life. The ping pong balls represent the things that you fill your life with that are not pleasing to God or take the place of God. Let me ask you this, what happens if you begin to add God to your life? What happens when you realize, okay, I need to get rid of these things? The thing is, when we start to let God influence our life, when we start to let the Word of God control what we do, it's going to totally transform what we look like. Our identity in Christ is going to be totally different. We are going to be transformed. And I want you to picture the, these water jugs as God. Because in the passage, it talks about Him being the living water. The water that, water that truly satisfies. The water that truly is all that we need. And so even as, as we begin to pour God into our life, the, the vase, begin to put God in, what happens? We start to see things changing. We see uh, the sins and the mindsets being uh, totally misplaced. And so as we add God to our life, that happens. As God is added, the things that we thought were the most important change are displaced because we recognize those things don't satisfy. But the living water, God truly satisfies. So you wonder, okay, I've been filling my life with all these things. How do I change? Seek the Word of God. Allow the Word, allow God to change you. Allow His truth in the Bible to help transform you to be who He wants you to be. Because when you think about the Word of God, it, it shares with you how you can please Him. It shares how we can honor God, how we can, how we can live a life that's honoring to Him. It shows us what we need to obey. It tells us the things we need to do. Maybe you think about obeying your parents. The Word of God tells us how we need to not lie. The, the Bible tells us how we should not be greedy, how we should put other people before ourselves. And so as we begin to add God to our life, what do you see? You see the Word of God. You see God in our lives. The things that you once treasured are now God because you are placing more value on who God is and what He's doing in your life. So even as we look at this passage, we see um, this, this, these choices. We can either go to the, the living water that satisfies, that can truly take care of every need you could possibly want, who can truly satisfy our soul. Or you can seek these other things that don't satisfy, that are gonna want, that are gonna leave you wanting something else, kind of like that cistern, you're going down, you're going back to that, that muddy water, but it never satisfies. Really, when we come to this world, Everything in this world outside of God does not satisfy. The things of this world, the, the pleasure of this world, the activities of the world, they don't satisfy if God's not in it. But we need to be loving God most. We need putting Him above all things, making Him the sole priority in our life, striving to please Him with everything that we do. So I want to challenge you tonight. What is your, where is your identity found? Is it found in these the sins and the things of this world? Or is your identity in Christ, the Word of God, what He's done for you on the cross? Have a good rest of your night. Hey, boys and girls! Hopefully you had a great time tonight. Come back next week, same time, same place, Wednesday at 6.30. See you then!